Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and today we're going to be having a look at this JavaScript function right here and finding ways to improve it. So the point of this video is that you may be asked a question like this in your coding interview, which might say, you know, here's this code, provide feedback on it and how you would improve it or if there's any issues with it. So I'm going to be running through the different issues and ways to improve this function right here in this video. And I think the best way to go about doing this is if you were to pause the video right now and try to work out these things yourself and then once you've done that you can keep watching and of course I'll take a look and um, you know go through the things that I found how, you know how to improve it so let's begin right now by talking about this function so the very first thing I'll say here is that this function is responsible for doing three things firstly it is going to fetch users from an API Okay, then it is going to take that data and render it out on the screen by using things like insert adjacent HTML, adding to a list just right here. Um, so that's the second thing. And then we're also going to be performing calculations on that data in the means or through uh, the total score variable here. We can see as we loop over the users, we're adding to the score number. And then once that's done at the end, we're also presenting that to the user once again, using HTML in the total score heading, text content, and displaying that total score. So these users have um, a name and also a score, and that calculation is happening within here. So that's the third thing that this function is doing. It's fetching users, it is rendering HTML, and it is calculating something based on some data. So that's three responsibilities when it can probably be split out into separate functions. So let's begin that right now by hopping down below this function here and making a new function called fetch users. Now this here is going to perform the operation of fetching data from the API. It's gonna say return, then fetch, then API forward slash users. Then it's gonna say dot then and interpret that response as JSON as per standard. So return response dot JSON. And now you essentially have this fetch users function returning a promise, which you can then say dot then on that to then gain access to the users because of course we're returning that uh, with this JSON here. So I can say, for example, fetch users, then I can say uh, dot then and now this is my users array and I can of course do things with that array. So that's the first thing that has been taken out and placed in its own function. Next, let's have a function called render users. Now this one here is gonna take in a list of users and it's also going to take in the total score. Now, of course, you can calculate the total score of the users uh, from the users array like we did at the top here, but you may want to perform those calculations separately and I'm going to be going into that very shortly, but for now we have the users array and the total score um, number, okay? And now within here, we can copy a lot of this code that does the rendering. So I'll copy this right here and paste it down inside here. So we're simply getting the unordered list of users. Then we're of course getting the total score heading H1 or whatever it might be. We're then going to uh, clear out the HTML list by using the inner HTML technique there. Then we are simply going to loop over all of the users and we're going to, of course, uh, remove this total score line. But we can see here, we're looping over each user, then we're inserting a new list item for every single user, displaying their name and their score in brackets. Okay, and then once we're done, we are also going to, of course, update the, the heading to have the total score uh, you know, um, at the bottom here. So we have extracted out that functionality and placed it inside this function. And now this function only does rendering. It doesn't do any calculations or any API calls. It just does rendering. Okay, so that's the point of that one right there. And the last function is, you may have guessed it already, that's going to be the calculation of the total score. We're going to say function uh, calculate total score, 
then it's going to take in an array of users. Okay, now we're going to return here and simply use array reduce. We're going to say users dot reduce. Okay, and then we're going to take in here the total, the user, then say the total is going to be plus the user dot score and begin with a initial value of zero. So this here may be confusing if you're not used to the reduce method. I've got a whole video, you know, dedicated to reduce if you're interested. But essentially right here, this function is going to run for every single item in your array. And we're going to begin with a number of zero. So we take the array of users and reduce it down to a single value, the total score. Initially, the total score is going to be zero. This function is going to run for every single user and the return value is going to be what the next initial value is or what the next total is in the next iteration. So again, I've got a video dedicated to reduce if you're interested, but this here is going to calculate the total score based on the user's array and the score property. Okay. So now we have all three functions separated out. How do we now tie them all together? Well, let's hop down to the bottom here and declare a new function called main. Now, this main here may not be exactly what your application would look like. However, you can think of this function here as being what runs inside an event handler, for example. If you've got a button called refresh users right on your web page, in that on click for the event handler, you can run this code inside here. What is that event handler going to do? In fact, I might just call this handle refresh users, okay? When you want to handle the event of uh, refreshing users, you want to first get the users. We're going to say const, uh, or my, uh, my mistake here, yeah, we're going to say uh, fetch users. Then we're going to say dot then. We have the users back. We are now going to, of course, render that out to the screen. We're going to say render users. Now, this takes in the users array and it also takes in the total score. Well, how do we get that? We simply make a new constant here called total score equal to calculate total score, pass in the users, and then, of course, pass this constant into this function and you are done. So let's observe what just happened. We've extracted out all of these different functionality into its own functions. Then within the code that uses your other functions, we're essentially, or let me rephrase that. In the, in the event handler, where you want something to happen, you call the function separately. And what that means is the code actually looks easier to follow. First step, fetch the users. Then once you've got the users back, get the total score, then render users. So it's easier to follow like this. It might be more code, okay? Because previously it would have just been something like get users, right? But it's more code. In this case here, there are a few advantages to doing this. Number one is we've already kind of seen it, right? It's clearer, easier to understand. They all do their own thing, but what's the benefit of them all doing their own thing? Well, the main benefit I see is the ability to test the code. If the function is, you know, pure in nature or mostly pure in nature, it does, a, you know, it does one thing. It doesn't do anything externally. Uh, it doesn't depend on global things. If the function is simple, it takes input, it does output, it is perfect to write tests for it. If it's not like that, for example, the original function, the get users, it's much harder to write tests because you need to worry about what stuff is happening internally in the function, um, you know, during the test case, if that makes sense. So keeping the code separate, doing the own thing is the way to go for sure. And it means more code down here, but the trade-off is actually worth it in most situations. Okay. Now that is the main part of how to improve this code, but I want to go through a few more things just to sort of, you know, apply some final touches. So 
First off, within this for loop, we can see here we're using the traditional let i equals zero and then the i plus plus. We can use a for of here instead and we can actually take advantage of object destructuring as well. So let's, uh, let's uh, go through that now. So let's make this instead a for of loop. So for of just like that, oops, my mistake. So for, then you go const user of users, right? So this is saying for every single user of your users array, then you wanna run, of course, this function right here. Now we can now remove this line, okay? We can get rid of this line because essentially this user is now each object, right? But we can also use object destruction. We can actually say within this uh, for loop, we can say curly brackets, then do name and score. So now for every user object, it is going to extract the name and the score out of it and make them variables you can actually use within your code. So now we've taken it down by about three lines and it does the exact same thing. We have the name and the score and now we're using it within the actual code right here and right here. The next thing to talk about is going to be our template string. So uh, we can actually, I might just duplicate this line here and comment this one out. And then at the top here, just get rid of this and use the back ticks near the one on your keyboard. Okay. And now we can just say uh, ally, then closing ally. And we can see already it's a lot clearer to understand what's actually happening here. Then you can just say something like, you know, name, then you can say, space, then you can say in brackets and you can say score. So by using this dollar sign and this curly bracket, you're able to uh, provide uh, JavaScript expressions within here and whatever the value is, it's gonna of course output that in the string. So we have the name and then in brackets, the score, for example, DOM and 249 as an example, right? So using template strings right there is gonna be perfect, a lot easier to read and understand like this and easier to follow. The less double quotes, the better, right? Cool, the exact same thing goes for the total. So I'll just say here, uh, total, then colon, and then pass through here the total score. And that's basically going to wrap up all of it. I'll just get rid of this main one right up here. And we have all of the functionality now, of course, separated out and we added those final touches in. So that is how I would improve this code. If you guys wanna see more videos like this, let me know in the comment section below and I'll make some more of them, but that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.